Good morning, everybody. Welcome to again one of our uh, webinars. Web webinars. Usually it's on a Wednesday, so I'm still trying to get that into my uh, in my process. It's a, it's a Thursday today. Uh, we're on the 27th of January uh, already with uh, yeah one of our I think most bespoke topics at least uh, what we see with our clients with new potential leads. Uh, yeah, ABM, account-based marketing, account-based sales, account-based X, yeah, customer. How do we do that? Um, experience. Um, today, we have one of our account-based experts, uh, Elroy Messelaar, uh, in the house, and he will uh, provide you uh, with tips, tricks within HubSpot on how to build, prioritize, and manage your target account list. Um, I see a lot of people are uh, joining at the moment, so really good to have you here uh, and have a warm welcome. Um, a little bit of house rules and how to keep this, uh, this meeting as interactive as possible, but also as manageable as possible. Um, you're allowed to put on your webcam so we, we can see who you are on the other side of the line. That's always good for interaction. Uh, what we do is we mute uh, the mics so uh, uh, questions, etc., can be uh, submitted via the, uh, the chat. I think we also have uh, a poll uh, halfway through, uh, so we like to keep uh, the meeting as interactive as, as possible. Um, but I think it's really good to have uh, at least uh, the, uh, the, the the enjoyment of Elroy, uh, uh, my colleague today. Uh, he is one of our uh, ABX experts and. Um, I think you will provide you today with some tips, tricks on how to build and prioritize that target account list, because I think that is one of the most critical parts of doing an account-based strategy methodology is getting that target list in place and uh, assuring you're targeting the right people, assuring you're having the right uh, uh, people in your list to, to, to get in contact with, because I think time is your biggest value you can spend at the moment. So keep the time uh, uh, spending on the, on the most common people. Um, I think good from my end to, uh, to, to, to introduce Elroy on, the, on this part. So, uh, so Elroy, could you please go off mute and uh, introduce yourself? Uh, hi, good morning. My name is Elroy. Can I share my screen? Yes. Time? yes. Okay. All right. Let me hit present mode. Everyone should be seeing my screen right now. So um, hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about target account lists and how to manage those in HubSpot. Like Martin already introduced, um, already gave a short introduction, uh, but maybe a more personal introduction. So you know who's talking in this webinar. Uh, my name is Elroy, I'm 31 years old. I was born and raised in Eindhoven, currently living in Eindhoven as well, with my beautiful wife and my cute French bulldog. Um, four years ago, I joined Webs as an inbound marketer. Um, and the past year, I've been focusing more and more on the growth side and performance marketing side of inbound marketing, and especially um, ABX, account-based experience and account-based marketing. Um, and also, I have sold certified trainer, which means I can tell you everything you need to know about HubSpot and the ABM tooling. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so now we have the introductions out of the way. Um, let's talk about today's agenda. I want to briefly discuss account-based marketing. Uh, so we all know, are on the same page about what it is and what it isn't. Um, and then we dive deeper into target account list. Why are they so important? Um, what are the best practices for building your target account list? And then we dive into HubSpot and I'll show you the different tools um, how you can manage and engage your target accounts with HubSpot. Um, all right, so let's get started. Account-based marketing. Um, yeah, one of the main strategies you hear a lot these days, um, but what is it? Um, so account-based marketing is a strategy. It's not a tactic or a specific campaign. It is a, a, a strategy, meaning uh, you unite your sales and marketing to deliver personal buying experiences for key target accounts. Um, and the goal is to close high value uh, B2B deals. And the way you do this is by creating personalized content and campaigns. Um, for today, we'll be focusing on this part, the key target accounts, and especially how to identify them and how to manage them within HubSpot. Um, 
so why is it your target account list so important? Um, and target account list, and I will keep referring to target account list as tall from now on because otherwise it would be saying a long word every time and it's easier for me. So your tall, why is it important? Um, yeah, we refer to shit in and shit out. And what we mean by that is um, the quality of your list is also, um, yeah, it sets the bar on what you can achieve. It sets the quality for your results. So if you design a great campaign, but you have the wrong destination, the wrong target accounts, the wrong people, uh, you won't see any results. Um, because if you're targeting customers that are not likely to buy, um, yeah, you won't achieve any success. Um, and we often see that this part is uh, very underestimated. So um, people don't have a good process in place or don't know exactly what to do. Uh, so they often rush this stage, uh, build a quick Excel file with a few company names and start targeting those without really thinking, uh, why do I need to target those accounts? Are they really the right target accounts for my company? Um, so that's why it's very important to um, have your toll in place. Uh, because what you will see if you have a poorly built uh, toll, it's very difficult to engage your target accounts. And you will see it in the performance um, in your sales funnel. It will not be improving. Um, yeah, your sales department is not happy with the quality of opportunities. Um, and you're close. if you close a deal, um, yeah, it may not be resulting in also in happy customers, no recurring impact. Um, and you can measure this by looking at conversion rates and um, or sales velocity that are metrics that can help you to identify um, is my performance good or not. Um, and I think the image um, below shows uh, exactly what we mean with shit in, shit out. Um, if you do not have the right quality accounts um, at the beginning and you start putting them in your funnel, at the end, you will still have bad quality uh, results. So that's the main uh, takeaway here. And that's why we think it's very important to, one of the most important stages in your setting up your ABM strategy is building your target account list to make sure you are targeting the right people. Um, yeah, basically we saying we prefer to have maybe not a good campaign, but the right target people than have a good campaign with the wrong uh, target accounts. So what are best practices for building your target account list? So how do you, how do, you do it? Um, so I want to hear from you. So I created a small poll. Um, I think Martijn can pull it up for you. And I'm curious um, if you already build a tool, if you're already busy in the process of building a tool, and uh, what you're looking at, and then we can go on what our best practices are. But I'm curious um, to know how are you uh, currently building your tool? Um, are you basing it based on ICP, meaning your ideal client profile, or do you use other data? Um, are you aligning with marketing and sales? Or are you using customer insights? So I see the first answers dropping in. Yeah, or maybe nice to to show what the results are. Or, or is that something? You yeah, can the results are dropping in. So um, I wait like for a few seconds more, and then I uh, will show you the results. Great, great. Um, I don't see any new results coming in, so I think we have most of the participants fill in, filled in the poll. Ten more seconds, and then uh, I will end the poll and show the results. All right, I will end the poll now, uh, and. I should be sharing the results now. I hope can every can everybody can see the results. Um, few interesting things here. Um, maybe fifty six percent is already building a target account list, so that's good. Meaning you are in the right webinar, at the right place to learn some best practices. Some of you are not building your tool right now or not in the process. So hopefully you learn some new things here. Um, did you build your tool based on ICP or other data? And I see your ideal client profile or other data. Um, there might be some good news, but what most people do and tend to do in the beginning is building a tool based on your ideal client profile and stick to that part. Um, so seeing some people using other data, um, that's good. Um, but the core focus should be, in the end, it should be your ICP. Um, did you align marketing and sales on building your tool? Most people answered yes. So that's very good. I'm very proud of my of the, the people here. You should be aligning marketing and sales, which you often see that people work with a different list or marketing is not aligned with sales. So um, they target the, the different target accounts and sales is expecting. 
So very good that most people are aligning with uh, marketing and sales. Um, is your talk based on customer insight, 50-50? So, oh, that's, uh, that's curious. So yeah, next to ICP, you want to uh, have more insights about your company um, to build your target list. Some people are doing that, some people are not. Um, I will explain later why it's important to also use customer insights um, for building your talk. All right, I will stop sharing from very curious insight. Uh, let's move on to um, yeah, the common mistakes from building your tool. And that's why I ask these questions in the poll. Um, because what we often see when people start building the tool uh, or start creating the tool, um, there are a few common mistakes where, where you end up with um, a bad quality target account list. Uh, so the first one we often see is uh, people start directly selecting accounts to match the ICP. Um, that's indeed a step in the process of building the tool, but not the first one. Um, so yeah, that's something you need to do, but it's not what you need to do at the beginning. Um, failing to identify the situation, pains and needs of target accounts. And that's um, what I mean with customer insight. Um, if you don't know uh, what your target accounts are struggling with or where their pain is or what their needs are, it's very really difficult to target them or engage with them because you don't know what triggers them to uh, yeah, buy your solution or product. Um, the next one is not updating your target account list. So you will start with your ICP uh, because that's basically the information you probably already have, but you need to keep updating your list and fine tune your list based on new customer insights or new situations or um, everything you keep learning uh, from your results. Uh, focusing equally on all accounts is something else you notice that people uh, tend to engage with all their target accounts uh, in an equal way, uh, but some companies are of target accounts are more valuable than the others uh, in terms of the results you might have. So uh, you want to tier accounts and a more valuable tier and so on. Uh, and last one, marketing and sales work with different lists. Like I said, the alignment is very important um, that your organization knows uh, what you're working on and that you're all working on the same thing, that you have a single uh, record of truth. And not working with different lists and sales uh, gets your leads and ask you why, why I get these leads. I don't know where these coming from. So alignment is very important. Um, so how did you do you build your, your tool? And we identify five steps. These are our best practices. Um, I don't want to uh, talk about them in, into detail. If you want more information about these steps and more in detail about these steps, I um, yeah um, suggest to listen to our podcast recorded by my colleague Stephen a few days ago. Um, where he talks about building your tool and how you can uh, use the five steps to build your tool. Um, I will highlight them briefly because I think they're still important to uh, be mentioned. So step one is build when you build your tool is to understand what customers you want more of. So you will look into your data, um, check on conversion rates, so sales velocity and see, okay, what are good, what's a good performance and um, do we see any customer where the conversion rates were better than other customers? And you start identifying those. Um, and then you want to see, okay, I want more customers like this one. Um, and then you go check, okay, what do these customers have in common? So identify the, the best performing customers and what do they have in common? And then you look at situation challenges, um, their intent, um, and you can identify those. And then you can select those companies or maybe existing cu customers in your database or try to find new customers that fit the, yeah, everything you identified in step one and two. Um, and then you can start building a list with company names. Um, and then, then, then your ICP comes into place. Then you start filtering uh, based on your guardrails. It could be your vertical. Uh, it could be a company size, for example. Everything that fits your ideal client profile. Um, and that's your target account list. And then you start tiering them. So you mention, okay, which one is uh, like a strategic uh, target account? Um, which one is more valuable? Um, and then you tier your accounts. And then you see the error going back to step one because it's not set and forget. It's an ongoing process. If you have your target list, you start engaging with target accounts, you keep learning, keep identifying new situations, new challenges, and you keep updating your target account list uh, in a continuous way. So these are our five steps uh, for building your tool. Uh, so you know you have a high quality uh, account list. Um, the next step is that I will dive into HubSpot and show you if you build a tool, um, how you can manage it in HubSpot. Um, but before, um, are there any questions about the slides I just discussed? Yeah, 
Yeah, there's some, already some questions coming in now, Roy, but also our colleague Stephen is, uh, is yeah. happy. So uh, one question was regarding the amount of, uh, of people in your talk. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that, of course, depends on the type of strategy you're, you're doing, right? Is it one-to-one, one, one to few? One yeah, to exactly. So okay. you can identify one-to-one, uh, one-to-few, one to, one to, one to many. That's basically the ABM strategies you can identify and depends on the strategy you choose. So, for example, if you choose one-to-one, -one, um, yeah, you more or less target 10 to 15 accounts. If you have a one-to-many, you could have up to 100 or 200 account accounts in your target account list. So uh, it really depends on your strategy, uh, what you're choosing. Yeah, that's in line with what Steven said. So that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> We're on the same page then. That's, uh, <laughs> I see no questions coming in via chat. Uh, so, uh, All right, cool. So then I will move on to um, the HubSpot part. Um, because when you uh, follow these five steps, you will have your target account list. Uh, but then it's the question, OK, how do I manage uh, this account list? Um, and how do I engage with my target accounts? Um, and there's where HubSpot comes into play. So HubSpot has specific ABM tools. Um, and and with that tooling, um, yeah, you can identify target accounts and stakeholders. You can create specific account plans, attract key stakeholders, engage with them, and measure progress. And if you need additional resources, um, extra tooling, we also have a marketplace with application partners you can use. So there's a lot of uh, things you can do uh, that will support your ABM strategy and help you building your and managing your target account list. Um, so I will switch, stop at the presentation and switch screens. I hope you all can see uh, my output environment. All right, cool. Um, so when you have your target account list, um, and let's put on my market marketeer hat for a minute, um, because we have a strategy um, behind us. We set up a target account list, and now we need to use that list in HubSpot. And as a marketer, I'm tasked with, um, OK, put this list in HubSpot so we can manage it. So the first step is, how do I get my target accounts into HubSpot? There are a few ways you can do it. Uh, if you go to the context navigations and then go to companies, you will get your company overview. Um, and there are two ways where you can um, upload your company. So you can select create company, and then you can manually enter um, the information about your account and put it in HubSpot. Uh, but like I said, if you have a one-to-many uh, strategy, then maybe you have like a hundred uh, companies and you need to manually enter into HubSpot, so that's not ideal. Um, so what you also could do um, is import an Excel file with all the company information. So you can select import, put your Excel file there, and all your uh, companies will be in HubSpot. So that, that way you can upload your target account list. And what you then want to do um, is go to context again, and you will see here target accounts. And if you select that part, you will go to uh, the target account home. And this is basically your uh, command center for sales and marketing uh, to work with your target accounts. Um, if you uploaded your uh, target accounts with an import, I believe you can select um, them as a key target account as well. So in your import, so they will be automatically uploaded in here. Um, if that's not the case, you will see choose target accounts in the top right. And if you select, um, there you can select your companies. Um, so they will be in this view. Uh, you can also uh, select it on the company record itself. But um, if you uploaded your target account list and identified your target account, um, they will be uh, shown here. Like you see here in this example, I have a small list of um, uh, companies that are, we put here, for example. Um, and I will show you how to work with this view because what you will see a lot of numbers and um, yeah, things on the side. So I will start with uh, the information you see in the in the top in the middle. Um, that's basically your um, yeah, general strategic information. So you see the number of target accounts, uh, the accounts with open deals, open deal value, um, the number of accounts with missing buying roles or decision makers. Um, so that gives you an overview of the basic information you need to know. Uh, if you uh, want to zoom in into more detail about the company itself, you see here on the left, a few presets so you can select all target accounts or the target accounts where no open tasks or no locked calls or where no decision maker is um, identified so you can work 
on your accounts based on what you think is necessary. Um, so for example, I see here, hey, there's uh, nine accounts with no decision maker. So I select no decision maker. And I see the accounts where no decision maker is identified. So I can work on these accounts to try to identify, okay, who's the decision maker there? Um, can I identify them? And maybe I need to go to LinkedIn Navigator, see if I can dig up some information. Um, if you want more information about your account, you can hover over your uh, the company name and select account overview. And it will pop up with uh, the activity and all the information we have stored about this uh, target account. So here you see the activity of the of this month. It says zero because it's, just, uh, it's a demo account, so there's, there's no activity, but it should be seeing some page view, uh, which contacts have engaged on your website, maybe to fill in the form. Um, so it will show new contacts, how many emails are sent, how many meetings are logged, et cetera. Um, if you um, identify the target, a, a contact within the target account, it will be shown here. And uh, this is very important. You see here, buying role. Um, and what you can do is um, yeah, select the buying role of this person. So maybe he's the budget holder, maybe he's the decision maker, uh, maybe he's an influencer. Um, so we'll send him to decision maker now. Um, and then this one is identified as decision maker. Um, if someone from your organization is working on this account or maybe working on a deal or uh, sending emails, it was shown here uh, on internal stakeholders. This is updated automatically. Um, and below you also see some deal information. So if there's an ongoing deal, we'll see the information about the deal here. Um, and also which page views, uh, which few pages he's been viewing. Um, so you have all the information you need to um, you know, look, okay, what is this account doing? What do we know about this account? Um, is the time right to schedule a meeting? Because I see the last meeting is a few days ago, for example, a few months ago. So we need to reach out again. Um, so there's no engagement. So we need to send them an email, for example. So this is basically your uh, overview you can work on together with your sales department and marketing together. Um, one cool well, thing. Maybe a good question from uh, the chat because yeah. uh, here you get the overview, of course, of who <clears throat> the person on the other side of the line is. Uh, huh? A question from Paul: How do you determine the decision makers? Is that based on the LinkedIn profile, job description, and yeah, how important is that for the ABM campaign? Um, yeah, it's very important because uh, when you look at the decision making unit, uh, it's not one person who decides on a deal. I think on an average, it's six people uh, you encounter when uh, working on a, on a business business deal. Uh, it starts with an influencer, uh, you have a budget holder, uh, you have a decision maker. So there are a lot of persons uh, with different roles who have a say on, yeah, on the go on a deal. Um, one part of the ABM strategy is that you identify your uh, decision making units. So you identify, okay, which roles uh, do we identify in, in the company? Um, and what are the specific roles of that uh, job function, for example. So maybe the director is also the budget holder and the decision maker. In some cases, you have the decision maker and the budget holder are two different people. So in the in the strategy part, you will identify your, your decision making unit and uh, what roles are present and at what time in uh, yeah, the customer journey, the roles are present. So um, yeah, before you create your target account, you should be uh, knowing what people or what roles are present in your target account. Okay. Okay. And is it then also then to a more granular detail, the more info you have, the better it is or? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, the more, the better. Um, if you know more information, um, also know the specific pains of, um, your buying roles, you can use it to engage, uh, the target kind of more, um, more personalized. Um, and yeah, if you have identified the roles and the job titles, we tend to use LinkedIn navigator to identify like, oh, which people are those. So you can put a face and a name next to, to the decision-making unit. Um, and you can uh, use that information here in HubSpot. So, and if you start engaging with your contact, um, a lot of people will uh, fill in forms uh, of other stuff and sign up for a webinar, for example. And if you can link them sometimes with their email addresses, for example, to a company name, um, you then can check, okay, what is the role of this person in the company? And if you do a little research, then uh, you can select the buying role that person has. Yeah, great, thanks. All right, so um, one thing I want to show you here in this, uh, in this over, are there any other questions about my time, by the way? 
Um, I think uh, yeah, from from Stephen uh, or at least from uh, from Paul, the same person. He mentioned in his business, it, it isn't always that transparent. Uh, uh, he mentioned. So I see already the chat is, is interactive. So uh, a lot of people yeah. are, are, are referring to LinkedIn, Sales Navigator, uh, stuff like that. So yeah. good, here. All right, cool. So um, yeah, I will continue. Uh, one thing I want to show you here is. Um, a cool feature of Asphalt. Um, if you would upload it to target account list and you start working on your accounts, um, you can also find our new target account uh, because I said it's not an ongoing pro it's an ongoing process. It's not set and forget. And um, Asphalt gives you recommendations based on your current target account list. Uh, so um, yeah, if you identified a few companies um, and you say, okay, I need I have some more information. I want some new target accounts. Absolute actually make some recommendations based on the same uh, companies you have in your target account list. Um, so you, have, you can select your choose as a target account and it will add to your overview. Um, and you have all the more information about this contact here. Uh, you also have the prospecting tool that uh, I will show you. Um, it shows you who is visiting your, uh, your website, um, what, how many pages they're viewing, so it also gives you some insight uh, of a company that you might not know of, but might be interested in your organization. Um, let's go back. Um, so we talked about engagement um, sometimes, and um, one cool feature, if you enable your target accounts, your ABM tooling in HubSpot, um, what it will do is automatically create some lists for you. So if you have your uh, overview and you identify some uh, accounts and maybe need some more engagement, um, and like we said, if you identified the different buying roles within the company and you label them, for example, as a budget holder or a decision maker, you want to start engaging with those um, accounts, um, maybe to share them some information, um, yeah, to, to learn more about them. Um, and you can use these predefined lists for your, uh, you know, your marketing efforts. For example, we have here all contacts labeled as a decision maker. So this list holds all people. Um, that are currently listed as a decision maker within our target accounts. And I can use this list to send emails or uh, use it as targeting for my uh, paid ads, LinkedIn paid ads, for example. Um, and I can use, specify that the message specifically for the decision makers. Because like I said, in the strategy phase, um, you're likely to identify, okay, the decision maker within this decision making unit, what are its challenges and pains? And then you can uh, tailor your message uh, specifically to them. And you can do that for every buying role. So that's the way you can uh, engage more easily with your target accounts. Um, let's go back to the target accounts home um, because we also talked about tiering. Uh, like we said, you want to tier your accounts because not all target accounts are um, yeah, the same value. Some are strategic partners. You say, okay, I want to have this company as a customer because it's maybe a good reference for us or uh, we expect a high deal here. Um, maybe you want to tier those in tier one. Um, maybe other companies that are um, less likely to close, but you think is interesting, maybe tier two. Um, so you see here in the top, you see a new customer profile tier. Um, and as you see, tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, and before you start tiering, you want to identify, okay, what are my tiering options? How do you want to tier my uh, companies? Um, the way we normally do it is tier one are strategic accounts, uh, tier two are key accounts that show engagement and tier three are just the key accounts that uh, match your ICP. Um, tier one is for us is fixed. So we also we select a few companies we think, okay, these are the most important one um, we want to land as a customer and on tier three, two and three are more dynamic. So you start in tier three. If you show more engagement, you start with tier two, um, go to tier two. And there are a few ways in Hotspot where how you can tier your account. So I will show you the uh, manually, you go back to uh, the company's overview. Uh, you also can select a company record from um, the target account's home. I'll show you a quick example. Um, this is the company record uh, of webs. I just added them to um, the target account overview. And here you can see, okay, target account set to true. And here you can set the ideal customer profile tier manually to tier one, two, or three. Um, so for example, I set it now to tier one, select save. Go back to target accounts. 
and have a select T1, it should be showing uh, webs as a T1 account. So this is the manual process, um, but yeah, it can be a lot of work if you have a lot of target accounts in your list. So there's also a way to automate this, and I will show you how you can do that. If you go to um, the automation navigation, you'll see workflows, and you can build a workflow that automates um, your tiering. In the top right, you can create workflow. And Hubspot is so nice to already build a predefined uh, workflow for us, so you don't have to start from scratch. If you scroll all the way down to uh, the workflow templates, uh, you will see define an ideal customer profile. And if you select that one and click next, uh, you will see build a default workflow. Uh, we'll zoom out a little bit. Which, and in this case, it's a uh, tier based on annual revenue. Uh, that's the default setting. Uh, and you have, like I said, we use other um, yeah, properties and uh, you can use any upsell property you want, any information you have stored in your database. Um, you want to use to segment your or tier your target accounts, you can use it um, in here in this workflow. But in this case, you will see, okay, if for example, a company has annual, a target account has an annual revenue um, higher than this amount, it is uh, tier one. Otherwise, um, we check if it's greater than or equal to this amount, then it's tier two, otherwise it's tier three. So that's one way to automatically tier your accounts. Um, so if you see, okay, this is the enrollment trader. So if somebody, if some target account from this industry, from the United States with this annual revenue or higher um, enters the database, it will automatically enroll in this workflow and automatically will be tiered to a customer profile tier. Um, and like I said, this is very customizable. So you can um, add any information you want here. Uh, Elroy, maybe yeah. a question from Daniel. Um, how to cope with, with target accounts that are already customers? Is that something you also can take into account? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have existing customers in your target account list. Um, like I showed in the manual, um, manual setting of the tiering, uh, let's go back to the company's uh, record. Um, I will select webs again. The selection of uh, being a target account and ideal customer profile um, is, a, is a company property. So um, it doesn't matter what the lifecycle stage of the company is, so if it's, it's a customer, um, you can still select the target account as true. So you can say, is the target account true or false? If it says target account is true, then it will pop up in your um, target account's home. So it doesn't matter if it's a customer or not, you can still use it as a target account and um, engage with them. So with using the right properties, the right values, you can still create the overview. Yeah, and those properties are automatically created when um, activating your ABM tooling. So the properties for buying role uh, tiering and is it a target account, yes or no, are automatically uh, put in your property. So you can use it right away. And you can do it manually or automated, like I showed you in the, already showed you. Um, one last thing uh, I want to show you because you also want to um, keep track of your performance. Um, therefore, I will go to uh, the reporting navigation and show you uh, the dashboard. Um, if you select create dashboard, you will go to uh, the dashboard library and you can already see it in the screen. There's an account based marketing uh, dashboard and it shows you all the information you need to know about your activities. Um, how about your running campaigns, uh, all you need to know. Um, and you see on the left, you see target accounts are also specific um, dashboards for um, bringing the target accounts into, into view. So the target account landscapes, uh, the overview. So you have more information, more data about your target accounts, what they're doing, what's the current performance, um, et cetera. Um, so these are pre-built um, dashboards with a set of reports. Um, you can also select uh, one report or you create one report if you want, and you go to uh, the report navigation again, select reporting. And if you go to the report library, you're in the top right. You can see some pre-built reporting by HubSpot. And if you scroll down to target accounts, you'll see uh, 
separate reporting uh, you can use. So you see accounts as created at target accounts weekly, uh, deals stated by target accounts, but there's some odd, some separate reporting you can use maybe in other dashboards as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of information, um, a lot of data you can use to track your uh, performance. Um, so that was, I think all that I can show you about the ABM tooling. Uh, so we talked about how you can upload your target account list, how you can uh, manage your account list, how you can keep track of performance and how you can engage with your uh, target account list. So I will go back to my presentation. And I think this was also short. Sure. Um, yeah, so I showed you all there is to know about ABM tooling. Um, before I end my presentation, um, are there any new questions, Martijn? Uh, Stephen hasn't answered yet. Or Yes, I, I think um, a lot of interaction is going on via the chat. So thanks awesome. for that. That's really helpful. Um, uh, Alan is asking if we can set uh, target goals per company. It's a good question. I don't know exactly the answer for that. I can come back to the answer later. I have to look it up. So um, if you can write down the name and uh, contact, and I will uh, reach out with the answer later after the webinar. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. We'll do good that. question. And another uh, question from Paul. Uh, he mentioned, is it possible to create a tall per region or per sales rep? Um, yeah, that's possible. So you can filter on a sales rep, so you can create a different target account is uh, for each sales rep um, and also select for region or industry so you can filter um, and those are all also filters in the target account home so you can uh, select different target accounts okay, great great um let me check let me check i, I think uh, steven is also doing a hell of a job answering a lot of questions so that's uh, that's really good maybe maybe some other topics people would like to discuss or would like to have answers on uh, for you specific elroy uh, please please type them in chat that's always always helpful And otherwise, Elwin, maybe uh, yeah. maybe a question uh, for me to you. Uh, yeah. How many times do you see ABM uh, being a specific question from our, our clients at the moment? How often do you see that happening? Uh, more and more. I think it's a uh, yeah, very interesting topic right now. A lot of uh, companies are aware of the power of ABM. Um, and um, yeah, the last few weeks, I think I get a lot of questions about ABM, maybe all my customers are asking about ABM. Uh, can you tell more about it? Uh, can you show me uh, something in HubSpot, for example? Um, so yeah, I, I noticed a lot of interest into uh, ABM at the moment. So good that we share some knowledge on that topic. Yeah. That, that's great. Um, I think there are no further questions for today, uh, or maybe one from Paul, that's, uh, that's always good. So uh, what channels are most effective for ABM advertising? He assumes LinkedIn, but uh, are there other, other channels we uh, we prefer or we use? Um, yeah, I think LinkedIn is uh, basically the default um, channel uh, because you have a lot of information. It's also a professional uh, platform and you have LinkedIn Navigator, so you can really dive into a company and see which people are working there, which role. Um, but also depends on yeah, your target account list and uh, where you get the information from. Uh, for example, if uh, your target accounts and uh, the people working there listen to a lot of podcasting, um, that might be an interesting platform for you to, uh, to use. Um, if they uh, read a lot of uh, from things from a specific blog, for example, uh, that could be the platform for you. So it really depends on your target accounts, uh, the industry you're working in, um, and the people who are, you want to target. Yeah, no, I, I thought you mentioned that yesterday. Also, people are using Slack communities and stuff like that. So you yeah. need to understand where your prospect, uh, your target, yeah. is consuming his, uh, his information. That's, yeah. that's where he does he get his knowledge, where does he get his information, um, okay. where are they talking about a possible solution, and there's where you want to be. Uh, so yeah, you need to identify that in your strategy phase. 
Yeah. Okay. I think I think that's uh, that's I think the best uh, thing to to keep in mind. Uh, be aware of who is on the other side of the line. And, uh, yeah. Understand your your customers. So, thanks for the insights, Elroy, and thanks for showing us uh, how to do that in HubSpot. Yeah. Um, of course, when people still have questions, they they're free to connect on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. yeah. You created the five steps uh, a guide to create your your tool. Uh, and also, I think uh, Stephen also in the chat is uh, is, is currently uh, spreading his knowledge regarding ABM. Uh, so, so feel free if you have any questions uh, later yeah. on uh, to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you guys. Uh, getting um, I don't know if you if you share the slides, but I put a link in here, um, specific page where we can help you with building your uh, target account. So, if you want more information about that part, uh, please reach out. Uh, like Martin said, connect us on LinkedIn if you have any questions. Um, yeah, and Steven was very busy in the chat, <laughs> like I hear, it's also, I've also recorded a podcast series about ABM with SaaS uh, So if you want to know more, more about ABM, target account list, uh, tooling, um, that's a very interesting listen. So uh, I recommend that to listen as well. Great. Yeah. And uh, indeed, we are going to share the slides, the recording. So uh, so if people were not able to join our, me our meeting today, we, uh, we can send that over later on. Um, I would like to thank everybody for today. I would like to thank you, Elroy, as well. And thanks, David, for uh, providing the information in the chat. Um, I wish you all a very good day today. And if you have any questions regarding ABM, feel free to reach out. And uh, see you next time in our next webinar. Goodbye. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>